to my next video. Uh, today we, we already met uh, Brenda in an interview and hopefully you watched that. And today we're going to take a tour inside her beautiful fifth wheel scamp. So say hi Brenda. Hi. And uh, tell us all about your scamp. Let's see, well this is a scamp fifth wheel style that um, is made by Scamp Company. They're out of Bacchus, Minnesota. They are one of the several molded fiberglass manufacturers. They happen to have a fifth wheel style. I think Escape does too. And it is about 2,600 pounds dry. It sits on a 3,500 pound torsion axle, which is lifted. So this has got a three inch lift on it so that it can be pulled by a full size truck. Um, this is just a half ton. This is just, yeah, just a half ton Silverado 5.3 liter gas motor. Um, scamps were originally designed to be pulled by mid-sized trucks. So you might, if you find a older fifth wheel, a lot of those sit lower. And then they're, they're set up for, you know, Tacomas and Frontiers. And you could probably pull one of those with the Chevy Colorado, um, any kind of mid-sized truck. This one's lifted so that it can be pulled by my truck, which once again is just a regular half ton. You don't need a special, you know, great big diesel dually to yank one of these around. So, and yet you get the the um, all the comfort of a small fifth wheel. Correct. That's exactly it. I get um, a little bit better comfort and a little bit better gas mileage. So people might want to know realistically what I get for fuel mileage um, if they're thinking about doing this when I'm hooked up probably 12 to 14 which is not super stellar but when I'm not hooked up this truck will get 19 miles to the gallon so that's where part of it comes in as I can drop the trailer and then if I'm just running around with the truck it's it's a little better for mileage that way well compared to uh, a big fifth wheel diesel truck getting maybe 810 right. with it on it's right. still pretty spectacular exactly well if it's cold enough it will drop down you know into the head scratching digits you know mm. with <laughs> with mileage just realistically speaking but overall you know i was i thought okay this setup should work as far as you know mileage and being able to save a little bit for gas that way so right seems nearly perfect so let's uh take a look inside it's completely self-contained you have the tanks it uh, is um i carry some external things in the truck and I'm actually going to look into having solar put on the roof, like you said, to, to deal with that particular issue, as opposed to drilling into my roof up there, which probably could be done, but it, you know, it's a little bit more intimidating. The fiberglass, fiberglass roofs are always quite a bit harder. Right. To yeah, mount it's not quite as on. straightforward to do it. So in the back of the truck, I have a portable buddy heater. The camper does have a standard furnace. However, that uses a lot of battery and it uses more propane. For the temperatures out here, you know, just at overnight when it gets chilly, this is ideal. I keep a third tank in the back of the truck, 20 pound tank that I, I run the portable buddy with. I also have a little generator in the back of the truck because I don't have solar. I came from really cold area and so solar is wonderful, but up there it wouldn't have cut it and I would have never been able to get warm. So I have a generator and then I just run the cord, you know, out the back of the truck and into the camper. So this kind of, you know, serves double duty with some house systems for me. Right. Well, having the, a lot of the bed free uh, really helps. Yeah, it does with storage and being able to just kind of do some of the stuff. One of the advantages I found to having the separate trailer and truck um, I can circle the wagons, so to speak. Like when I when I came out here, there was nobody over there. There was like a very small group over there. But the way that I have things positioned right now with, with the truck here and the trailer, you know, kind of at angles, I have my own little space here. Kind of a courtyard. Yes, exactly. So you can kind of circle the wagons with, you know, if you have a, a rig that actually comes in several sections. So that, that was an unexpected right. advantage that, you know, I didn't have that in mind when I bought this, but I found it was Well, cool. and being able to leave camp at home very secure while you run into town for water or, or just whatever is a huge plus. Yeah, yeah, you don't have to like pack up and drag everything with you Okay, and so this is the deluxe model of uh, fifth wheel. 
It is. Scamp has um, two different styles they do. One is standard, um, which means that all the cabinetry and stuff is fiberglass. And then they have the deluxe model, which means that the interior is done with wood as opposed to fiberglass. Both are pretty sturdy. My first scamp, and I love that, that was, that was standard. And I had absolutely no problems, you know, with the way that that was set up. So this just happened to be a fluke because this is what they had. So, you know, they're not real, real common. So it came up and I grabbed it. It happened to be a deluxe. So that's. Um, and are they expensive? This is used, right? Correct. It's, it's, they vary in price. Um, Scamp is probably a little bit more expensive to pick up initially because they are kind of a niche item. But part of that is also because they're fairly durable. You know, I ran around with a 1978 and for, for a travel trailer, that's, you know, pretty good. That's lasted a long time. So with some care, they're actually quite durable, which contributes to them maybe being a little bit more to buy initially than a regular, you know, pull behind travel trailer. So it, it, it varies. Um, it depends what, you, what you'll pay for one is going to depend on the size that you choose. You know, they go 13 foot, you have 16 foot, you have, these are 19 feet. This is the 19 foot? Yeah, this is the 19 foot. This is the biggest one that they make. And the, being the deluxe, it's the most expensive one they make. Correct. And they come with, yeah, it's a variety of different wood. And like I say, this is just what was available when I was looking. So I grabbed it. This could have been a standard and I'd have probably bought it, you know. So it depends on what you can find. And so when you were looking, you, uh, what did you have as a price range that you were thinking you would have to pay? Um, I figured it was going to be anywhere, for a fifth wheel, it was probably going to be anywhere from... Nine thousand dollars to thirteen, fourteen, fifteen—you know, depending. I probably went a little bit higher with this than I was actually comfortable going, but I, in hindsight, now I don't regret it. You know, it, it worked out well, and I ended up really liking it. So. Right. So you you think you can probably get one at the low end for nine thousand? Nine to ten. Nine to ten. And it's probably going to be an older model and that doesn't necessarily need to scare a person off you right. just you have to think about what you want to do with it a lot of the older ones have got the the drop axle so they're not you know quite as sit up quite as high as this one does so you have to think about what you want to pull it with and you have to think about what you want to do with it you know to make a decision if it's going to work for you if you have to raise the axle you know it's probably going to be however much it would cost to have someone stick a, a you know a lift on it flip it around or however they do that so, uh, do you mind if I ask what you paid for this one? Um, I paid 16 for this one. That came with Scamp personally putting a brand new hitch in the back of the truck. You do have to have a special, you can't just go to Walmart and pick up, you know, a hitch system and, and use that. It has to be specially for these things. So, you know, that's a factor to think about. So the price with this included, you know, me going to the factory and they put the hitch on. But it's it's the 19 foot. It's the deluxe, and it's practically brand new. I mean, yeah, this it shows is a 2000. Yeah, this is a 2010, and I was told it spent a lot of time undercover in storage someplace. So it's a nice one, really, really nice one. Okay, so uh, one of the things that really stands out with these is the ground clearance. Like you said, that really, really high ground clearance. Right. When you normally, if you find an older scamp, you will probably notice, you know, the body sits down quite a bit lower on the tires and stuff. This is lifted so that you have clearance. I actually, when the truck was in the shop, you know, I had the stuff out of the back of the truck and actually tucked under this thing, you know, to keep things out of the elements and they fit just fine. So. And you can put different tire sizes and things on this. It's, some of them have come with 13-inch wheels. These are 14. You can go up to 15-inch wheels, you know, different options with that to, to kind of customize it to suit what you want to do. Right. So that really good, does you well in the backcountry. It does. It's and that was part of the factor with, with choosing one of these was, you know, being able to get in and out of stuff. You know, that said, you don't want to beat on it. No. You know, when you're actually dragging it behind you, you know, there are some terrains that are going to be questionable. 
Um, something most people are not aware of, and I'll just mention this because it's something that you have to factor if you're considering one. Like with my truck, I have the bed rails on it. Right. And so it's not so much a ground clearance that I actually worry about, but when I'm hooked up, I have to watch and make sure that this, ah. you know, doesn't, doesn't hit the rails. And your truck's taller than most. Do you have a lift on it, you know? Well, I think... It, it doesn't have a factory lift, but I think that they did probably put larger tires on. These are obviously not the factory tires, so, you know, I, I think it just has bigger tires, so it sits up. Right. It sits up a little bit taller. I have not had a problem with it actually, you know, hitting, but that's one of the things I watch. I worry about that factor more than I do, you know, the underneath clearance of the trailer. Right. So I'm just careful when I go in and out of stuff. I'm watching my mirror. You know, I drive trucks, so I'm used to doing this, but I watch the mirrors, you know, and I just make sure that the that the camper's not going to hit hit my bed rails. And everybody doesn't have bed rails, you know, so, but it's something to mention. Uh, how wide is it? Oh, that's, you know what, that's a good thing. When we go in this thing, um, there have been people that have toured scamps, and they're like, well, gee, it's smaller than what I thought it would be. And part of that is because standard fifth wheels are much wider. Right, eight foot. Usually. This, yes, this is only the width of the truck, so that's part of the factor also with that makes these maneuverable as well. Is that it's narrower. So whatever the width of a vehicle is, you have six, six and a half feet, something like that. That's what this scamp is. So it's 19 feet long, but it's only. Which is a negative in that it's smaller. Yes. inside but it's a huge plus uh for visibility to see Maneuver, what's behind yes, you maneuverability you're less likely to you know it's it's like if you're pulling a u-haul trailer or a standard travel trailer you need to be watching behind you because just because your you know vehicle might clear something it doesn't mean that the trailer will because it's wide you know if you're going through a construction area or something and this is just as wide as the truck is and no you know it doesn't overhang or anything so i think i consider that a huge plus uh, because I'm like you, and I'm much more concerned about getting into the backcountry than I am about uh, m most other things. Right. I like I like stuff that's nice, but I like to also keep it simple as far as you know size and portability. You know, there's a there's a balance that a person runs with. You know, the the great big fifth wheels are they're, they're really great, but you're not going to want to go into some of the more remote areas with you know one of the giant fifth wheels. You are not. You're, you're not taking <laughs> them off road, basically. <laughs> Off pavement. Right. Right. So let's uh, take a look inside. So it is possible to have a kitty cat on the road. Oh, heavens, yes, yes. In fact, she's a strictly an indoor cat. And she is a senior cat. She, um, Maggie is 11 now. I got her as a kitten and she came out trucking with me. But she's always been indoors. So this is what I'm saying is this can be done. Um, she is actually now used to her harness. This is uh, called a butterfly cat jacket. And I put her on a tether, and at first, we didn't like that at all. You know, it was like bad mom. But now she associates it with being able to go outside because that's something that we have not been able to do before. So I just clip her to the tether so she can't wander off. Um, there are coyotes, you know, and other things out here. So, and it's worked out really well. She goes outside a lot and she sits under that little bush back there um, to the back of my trailer and she'll just sit in the shade and she'll just enjoy the fresh air. And I don't have to worry that she's going to take off, and so because she's tethered, right? She's tied, right? And she's a tortoise shell, and they're kind of sometimes a little bit more contrary with the attitude. And so, if Maggie can get used to something like that, it, it is most definitely possible to take your kitty cat with you, good, and, and give them a good life. Good. Well, and I just, I love your, your trailer. I just well, think this is Thanks very much. I, I, I liked the wood when I first saw I bought this sight unseen. I did a whole bunch of no-nos when I bought my rig and I, I bought the trailer sight unseen. I bought the truck sight unseen. I had three weeks to pull all this together because my house sold unexpectedly and I had three weeks to, you know, foof, slam a rig together. So I bought it sight unseen. And then when I went to pick this up, I was just, I had pictures of it and stuff, but when I came and saw it in person, I was like, wow. I, I like cabiny style stuff. So the, the, you know, the solid wood appealed to me. And I liked just the fact that it's solid wood. It's not particle board. Scamp doesn't skimp when it comes to some of the materials that they use. Um, the only particle board 
item that I actually have in here is the, you know, the Formica top table. And those are all particle board. But everything else in here is absolutely solid wood. So. Everything is nice. So here's your, uh, here's your microwave. Is, and, yeah, uh, the microwave and the fridge. Um, this nice big freezer. This is one of the tiniest roof air units I think that you can get. It's, I was told originally that the generator I have wouldn't run it. However, I did do a little bit of an experiment and if you go slow, I can get the generator to fire this rough air. And you have a, a Yamaha 2000. That's correct. That said, you know, I don't want anybody to, you know, <laughs> go and say, I can do this with the generator and then it doesn't work. I, I happened to test this out and I was able to get the generator to run this without shutting down. So I'm not sure the actual BTUs on this, but I think it's probably one of the smallest ones that they make. Um, Which is what you need in a tiny space. Right, exactly. Well, it's one of the amenities that my um, 13 foot didn't have. And based on what I, I have to do, I can't always follow the weather. You know, if you're if you're boondocking and you have other arrangements and you know, you, you can shift altitude and things, you know, if it gets hot, you go up a little higher. Well, if I'm work camping and, and sitting someplace I can't do that. So I have to take things like that into account. So this has some of the amenities that are dependent on plug in services for the most part. You know, it depends on what you want to do if you come out full time and how you want to, you know, make a living. So mm -hmm. if you're work camping, you know, the odds could be that you're going to have electrical hookups and you could be like, okay, well, you know, air conditioning is important to me or, you know, whatever, fridge, type right. things like that. This runs off of, um, it's actually fired up now, it runs off propane. So far, so good. You know, it's worked <laughs> pretty well. It will run off of uh, 120, you know, if I have an actual outlet. So, like, when I get up to Yellowstone and they give me my campsite, I'll be able to just plug the trailer in, and this will run off of standard current, so I'm not, you know, burning propane that way. Um, furnace, pretty basic. This was a lifesaver when I did have power. But when I picked the trailer up, I was dealing with... 10 below temperatures literally I had to finish up a job so I couldn't head south right away and I was able to find a year-round campground that had power hookups oh, you know, thank heavens. and so I was able <laughs> to use the furnace and it kept this warm so I you know if you have the resources available um, I've seen this thing in 10 below and, and I was not uncomfortable. Once I had the, the hookups and stuff, you know, I was not uncomfortable. This did actually keep it warm. So, um... Everything is just beautiful. You know, the wood is all really attractive. Uh, nice construction. It is. Lots this is of storage. solid oak is what they used to do this. So, it's, it's pretty sturdy, you know, if it starts to... You, you can refinish this, which is nice. You know, it's something that you can't really do with, you know, particle board. If something were to happen and it were to, to get wet or end up with any kind of damage, you know, with particle board, you're kind of, you're going to be replacing all of it. This, you sand it down, refinish it, and it stays good to go. So that's a benefit. That was one of the things I really liked about this that's not common in travel trailers was that they actually used, you know, solid, solid wood to do it. Mm -hmm. And so you uh, use this as a couch, your bed, you sleep over the cab, is that right? That's correct. Over the, yeah, the, over the, the, I, I sleep in the loft, which is behind us, and then this has uh, three different configurations. I've got it kind of set down as a lounge. I have had it up, you know, as the dinette table, and the way that Scamp has these set up, and I'm not sure about year to year, this is a 2010, so I had the table set up, and there's also another little shelf that sits underneath the table and so like you could put you know computer equipment there or what have you um, I find dinettes to not be the most comfortable thing in the world so I have it as a lounge you can also use um, the smaller table part there are two parts to the table on this there's a larger one which is underneath it now the smaller part I have in the closet but you can use the smaller part set that along the back instead of the big one and have like a u-shaped couch so there are three different things that you can do with the area down here. 
very nice. You just it feels so much like a a home. It is. Know? That's that's what I. You know, you can find the things that are important to you out of your regular home, and you pack it down and bring it with you. Anything can be made portable. As far as things that you enjoy or atmosphere, I don't feel like I'm lacking anything. All my books are on, you know, they're they're digital now. So I, I just, I changed up the way that I did things a little bit and I brought it with me. So I have internet, um, I have, there's not really anything I don't have. I like music. I have, you know, a little portable Bluetooth speaker. It's wireless. You know, you, you can have this stuff in a small space. You're just, you're consolidating what's really important to you and you're chucking the rest. It's kind of a good right. nutshell way to put it. And you have a, a normal kitchen. You have uh, the fridge, freezer, uh, microwave. I do. I do. And then uh, regular standard RV stove and you bought the oven. I do, and that was a bonus. So one of the first one of these I looked at, it didn't have an oven. I actually have three ovens because I didn't know that I was going to end up with one with an oven. So I have like a tiny solar oven, and I also have uh, Coleman makes a fold-down metal oven that will sit on the top of a mm -hmm. stove or a camp stove outside or something. And so I actually I have three ovens. And as long as I can make cookies, that's all I want to do with it. So. <laughs> or brownies. <laughs> brownies. Brownies are good. Desserts. Yeah. So once in a while I might make a pizza or something in it. So, you know, it's nice to have. But if you don't have an oven, there's ways to get around that. And yes. Different styles, so. And that's a large, uh, over here is the um, sink. Yep, sink. And that's a, a much, uh, actually a larger work surface than most uh, RV kitchens have. I mean, you can actually prepare some food there. Yeah, the counter space is not bad in here for you know considering that this is actually really tiny yeah it's it's you actually have some places to work and do things right and then some people have uh, and i'll mention this because it comes up because they're like what's that fuzzy stuff on your walls right scamp aficionados they call this rat fur um this is i think exclusive to scamp i think casita uses like a carpet type material part of the purpose for it is insulation and sound there are, what I was told was that there are two layers of reflectix underneath this. So there's the, the fiberglass shell and there's two layers of reflectix and then there's this rat fur. But the important thing to me with the rat fur is Velcro sticks to it. This now actually opens up all this stuff that you can like stick to your wall. So that's how all this stuff is on my walls is just, it's Velcro. Because Very it happens cool. to stick to the yeah, it sticks to the wrapper. So you don't need screws or nails. You right, right. Just and then awkward. I just use three M the three M picture hangers, the command adhesive picture hangers to like tack down the shelves and stuff so that when I'm moving, you know, stuff doesn't fly all over the place because it will if you don't fasten it down. But Velcro. Velcro sticks <laughs> to the wrapper. It's great. That is a very nice plus. Okay, and so your bathroom is back here. I do. It's um, well. You commented. You thought it was actually quite large. I did. It, do, it looks like it's going to be tiny until then you, open you open it. the door. And I'm I'm serving dual purposes right now. So I'm not when I when I came down here. You know, it's ten below, and you're not using the tanks. And then I have not gotten into the habit yet that gee, I can use my tanks. So I have you know alternative methods it, set up to do stuff. But you're when, just using a five gallon bucket. Right. My luggable loo, right. which, which is wonderful. That was something I, you know, used in the truck. So, but it would be very—it's a large, very usable shower. It is. I'm looking forward to filling up the tanks and giving it a try. Right now, what I am doing is using a solar shower, actually, that's out sunning itself behind the trailer right now, and then I hang that over the door of the truck. You know, I have the barn doors. I open the doors. I hang the little solar shower, and I go that way and because it's nice down here you know you can get away with that so, mm -hmm. so you not you're not dumping the takes at all oh well, do you Correct. use the kitchen uh sink um i have a dish pan in the in the sink and so i kind of will go out and i i, I don't ever put anything horribly toxic you know it's just for my Food washing and, up right yeah. yeah and so I'll, that'll go outside for the most part because it's just very small quantities so you're not dumping Nope. 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 Not yet. I wouldn't either. I mean, I'm not. I'm not fond of dumping. And well, I didn't want to have to pack down camp. You know, I I had to be here because for an unknown amount of time because my truck, 
you know, had to be in the shop. They're having some damage fixed. And um, I didn't want to be in a position where, gee, my tanks are full and I can't go, you know, hook up and go dump my tanks because I don't have my truck. So I just have not use the tanks yet right but it's coming so you're planning on it i am planning on it yes it just isn't con it isn't convenient right now it's not convenient right now once i i get up and um i'm going to be stationed at mammoth hot springs and i think they're going to put me in a campground there where i will have you know the hookups and the, and the stuff and all that will be used at that time you know right and so there's your bedroom yep and so my bedroom is right up this way and um Scamp told me that these units were essentially built for storage. So they've got little things, you know, tucked all over the place. So cubby holes that you can tuck stuff into. This is actually a storage unit here. And this whole area above here. And the door is on the back side, so you're not going to be able to see it. But there's a door on the back side, and this whole area up top is actually storage. Well, is she not happy with me? But it's actually a very, very large bed. And it's a queen. Um, it's a, well, a full slash queen. Maybe more a full size. So that's, that's what's on it right now is the full size sheets. Oh, Magnum. Very nice. Plenty, very, very comfortable bedroom. Yes. And over here you must have more storage. I do. These are just, just, uh, just a pantry. Couple, couple closets, which it's like Fibber McGee. We don't know what could come flying out of here. Right. right. Which is pretty large, actually. I keep like the uh, portable buddy rides in here, and I have some extra fans and stuff. I found it's useful to have several different ways to accomplish something. So like a fan that works off of both battery and plug-in is nice. And so sometimes I have some duplicates of things and I'll keep that in here. You know, I have an electric heat. So it's, you know, instead of burning my propane, if I have a power hookup, I might just run the ceramic heater, you know, or something different. So. Mm -hmm. Well, Brenda, I just, I love your scamp. I, I, and it's so uncommon that most people have never seen one or never been in one. So I think a lot of people are really going to enjoy this, that it's just so nice. Well, thanks so much for coming to see it. it uh, I'm it, happy to show it, you know, if people are interested or they would like to, you know, see the actual... It's hard with pictures and cameras to get a sense of what the actual size of these things is. You know, like the, the factory might show it to you with a fish eye or something. So you think, oh, it's so huge. And then they get in and they're like, oh, <laughs> it's small. But for, for a, a single person or maybe a, a couple that really, really loves one another, you know, this it could be a... A good option so i'm happy to show it to people if they're wanting to see some more yeah i love it i just think it's uh, one of the best rigs i've ever seen a uh, very good balance of uh movability and gas mileage and 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 plenty of room and comfort and it's just beautiful it feels good inside here yeah i try to make it a nice little zen place you made it a yeah. very cozy loving home Wonderful. Well, uh, just so everybody, anybody can do this, even if you don't have a, a scamp fifth wheel, you can, you know, take the things that are important to you and put it into what you do have and, and you know, have the same kind of, the same kind of atmosphere. Right. And positive vibe going, so. Right. Well, thank you much, Brenda. I really appreciate the tour. Well, you're very welcome. Thank you, everyone at home for watching and stay tuned for our next video. Uh, until then, like us on YouTube, subscribe to our channel, and tell all your friends about a new and better way to live. So we'll talk to you later. Mm -hmm.